In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called two sum. So given an array of integer nums and an integer target return indexes of two numbers such that they add up to a target. So here you can see we have an example of 2, 7, 11, 15. So the target is 9. So the goal is we want to return the indexes of the elements in the array that add up to the target. So in this case, 2 and 7 add up to target 9. So we return its in their index. In this case, 2 has an index of 0. 7 has an index of 1. So we return that in an array. And here you can see we have another example of 3, 2, 4. So the target is 6. And in this case, we just return the elements, uh, the index of those elements that add up to the target. In this case, 2 and 4 add up to 6. So we just return their index is going to be 1 and 2. So here you can see we have another example of 3, 3, and the target is 6. So ideally, what we can do is we can um, use the element twice, 3, and plus 3 will give us target, but the question says that we cannot use the same element twice. So we need to make sure that the elements are not the same, right? So in this case, 3 plus 3, in this case, this the other 3 will give us a target. So in this case, the index is will be 0 and 1, right? So in this case, the only one valid answer exists, right? So the goal is that there will be valid answers. And if there's no valid answers, basically we're, we're just going to throw an error. Or what we can do is we can just return a um, empty array, right? So any, anything works. Um, basically, to solve this problem, one way we can do this is we can use a nested for loop. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So in this case here, you can see we have a 2 and 7, right? So if we have 2 and 7, uh, what we're going to do is we can uh, be able to iterate and starting from the first element right here, which is 2, and then we just use a nested for loop and then just try with each and every single combination. We'll try 2 with 7, right? 2 plus 7. We see if that gave us the target. If it does, we just return the index. If it doesn't, we're just going to continue, try with 2 and 11. And then we're going to try with 2 and 15. Then we're going to move the, the, the eye pointer uh, one to the right. We're going to try with 7 and 11, 7 and 15, 11 and 15, and so on, right? So we're just trying with every single combination for adding the sum to get to the target. So that will, that will be one approach, but this will give us a time complexity of big O of n square. So it's not the most ideal approach, right? It's not the most ideal solution. So what we can do is instead is we can be able to uh, use a hash table, right? And be able to cache the result on the table and be able to bring the time complexity down to a big O of n because for hash table, it will give us a constant on average for lookup a value in, in table in the hash table, right? Unless we're using an array. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have a table and the goal on how to solve this problem is that we basically just going to say, in this case, the target is in six and the current value is three. So what this, what we really want is that we want to see if there is a, another three in the array. If there is another three in this, in this array, then we basically found our sum. We found our num, we, we found our two sum, right? So in this case, we have a three here. We want to see if, if there is a three in the array. If there is, we can just return that index and as well as the current index and then return that in, in array form, right? So what we can do is we can use a table, um, right? What we can do is we can use a table that has a key and a value. And then the key is going to be the, the, the elements value, right? So in this case, three has an index of zero. Then we're going to have two and has an index of one. So the value is going to be the index. And we also have a value of four, which has an index of two. So all we're going to do is we're just going to do a one pass, right? In this case, we're just going to uh, iterate um, all the elements in the array. First, we're going to save their value, their current value, as well as their index in the table. Then we're just going to iterate starting from the first element all the way to the last element. And basically all we're going to do is we're going to get a difference between the, the target versus the, uh, and the current element. So in this case, the current difference is six, uh, is three. So we check to see 
if there's a 3 in a table that does not equal to the current index. The current index in this case is going to be 0, so we check to see if there is a 3 in a table. In this case, it is. And the index is 0, which is equal to the current index. So we do not want to use the same algorithm twice, so in this case, what we can do is we can just continue to move on to the next iteration. Now we have 2. So 2, 6 minus 2 is a 4, right? So in this case, we have a 4 for a difference. So we go to the table, we check to see if there's a 4 in the table, in this case we do. So its index is different, is, does not equal to the current index, which the current index is 1, right? So in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to add the current index onto the array, and then this index onto the array as well. So now at the end, all we're going to return is 1 and 2, right? So that's basically our result. Now, before we continue our video, I want to talk about how can my channel better prepare you for your Nest Coding interview. So if you're currently preparing for your Nest Coding interview, I have a playlist, or I should say a section in my channel called Algorithms, which I cover the most fundamental, uh, most important things, most important algorithms that you should know, things like DFS, Dijkstra, topological sorting, and all the sortings that you should know. And um, data structures, I cover a wide range of data structures from array all the way to trees, heaps, uh, graph, tables, and so on. And uh, I also have a section CS Fundamental, which I cover bigger notation, solid principles, and so on. And there's a one important category, which is going to be the lead code by categories. So I basically sort all the lead code problems that I did in categories. So basically here you can see I have two pointers, which is one category. In sorting, usually in using min heap, max heap, and applying sorting algorithms and so on. Uh, sliding windows, greedy algorithms, binary search, array and string, tree, usually in binary tree, binary search tree, dynamic programming, linkless, search, and backtracking. So I hope that uh, you can use my resource to better prepare for your Nest coding interview. So let's continue with our video. Okay. So let's take a look at another example. Let's say we have three and three, right? So let's say we have three and three, okay? So pretty easy example. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a hash table to get the result. In this case, we're going to have a key and a value, okay? We're gonna have three, which has, we're gonna iterate the entire array to get the value, the current element, as well as their index. So we're gonna have a three, and their, uh, its index, in this case, is going to be 1, right? Because we're going to, uh, first, we're going to have index 0. Then we get to this element right here. This element, it has an index of 1. So we over, we just basically change that value to 1, right? So now we have 3 and 1. So then what we're going to do is we're going to first start with this element. We're going to see if there's a 3 in the, in the table. In this case, we do. Then we see if that index is different to current index. In this case, the current index is 0. Right, because 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. So we check to see if 3 is in the table. In this case, we do, right? And that element's value, and that key's value has a 1. 1 is different than 0, so we return both of those index in array form, okay? So hopefully, we go over those uh, weird cases. Let's try to see how we can do this in code. So to solve this problem, basically, you can see here, we're going to have our table, right? We have our hash map. Key is going to be integer. Value is also going to be integer. We're going to do a pass. In this case, one pass to get all the uh, elements and their index. So in this case, we're going to have a table that's going to have a key and a value. And the key is going to be the element. It's going to be the element's uh, value. And then the value is going to be the index of that element in the array. Then we're just going to have a for loop to iterate each and every single element and get its difference. Once we get its difference, we're going to check to see if that difference, that element contains in the array. In other words, we're trying to see if that element is contained in the array, in the array, num array that, we, that we're given, right? Do we have that difference? Do we have that sum? Do we have those two sum? In this case, if we do have those two sum, we can be able to add those two elements up to equal to target. So, what we're going to do is once we're going to get our difference, we're going to see if that element is in the hash map. And we also want to see if that element 
does not equal the current element because we do not want to add duplicate elements. And at the end, we're going to return an integer array that has a hash map dot get difference and i. So i is going to be the current index, and then uh, hash map dot get difference is going to be the index of that difference element, right? So time complexity in this case is going to be big O of n or big O of 2n, but we just drop it. The, the constant, so we're going to have a time complexity of big O of n. And the space complexity is also going to be big O of n because we're caching the result onto a hash map. So as the input size scales, the, uh, the space complexity, the, the size of the table will also scale. So in this case, the time complexity and the space complexity is all going to be big O of n. So there you have it, and thank you for watching.